Sri Lanka is still fighting to gain control over the COVID-19 pandemic, which continues to spread across the country in devastating waves. But physical repercussions aren't the only challenges faced by those who have contracted COVID-19. Recovering from this disease can be every bit a mental challenge as it is a physical one. Family physician Dr. Vijay Balarupan knows this all too well. My dad and I were on our way to work one morning when I noticed he was feeling a little under the weather. Two days later, both of us tested positive for COVID-19 and were ordered to quarantine immediately. It wasn't a good experience for either one of us. My dad was actually harassed by his neighbors when the ambulance arrived to take him to a quarantine center. Ayesha De Silva, an attorney at law, learned that she had contracted COVID-19 when she began developing symptoms and got herself tested. I was told that I had to check into a quarantine center immediately. It was a difficult time for me, both mentally and physically. A young graphic designer, Abdul Kader, went to the hospital after developing mild flu-like symptoms and tested positive for COVID-19. In those lonely weeks spent in isolation, Vijay, Ayesha, and Abdul had friends and family reaching out to them, many of whom were supportive and concerned for their well-being. However, it soon became apparent that others who had reached out were primarily concerned for themselves, as they showed a greater interest in finding out which places the patient had recently visited, how they contracted the virus, and if there was any chance they had passed it on to someone else. This display of insensitivity, or what one doctor calls non-infective privilege, turned out to be a socially polarizing experience, one that persisted for months after these COVID-19 survivors had recovered from their initial infection. When I came back to work, I immediately noticed people acting strange around me. My colleagues were no longer comfortable sharing a space with me and kept trying to avoid me, even though I was no longer positive for COVID. Ayesha had an even harder time recovering from the disease. Not only did she feel ostracized by a social circle, she also had to deal with the long-term health effects of her initial COVID infection, better known as post-COVID syndrome. The toughest parts were the brain fog and fatigue. They made daily life and doing menial tasks extremely difficult. Most of my friends and family believed I was still infectious and they wore protection around me if they were spending time with me at all. Things weren't nearly as difficult for Abdul. After coming home from quarantine, I was able to return to life as usual. Except for a few, all my friends and family were incredibly supportive. They weren't overly paranoid and understood that I was no longer infectious. Unfortunately, these kinds of experiences aren't all that rare among COVID-19 survivors, indicating that we as a society have a role to play in helping those infected make a full recovery, both physically and psychologically. We need to do all we can to stay safe, but we also have a responsibility to educate ourselves about this disease and adopt better values and a more supportive attitude towards those who are still battling the effects of this devastating virus.